Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world? And now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world. If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to breadridgeway.com forward slash freebie. Welcome to the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway, where you'll learn the keys to building a profitable speaking business from speaking industry pros. Each week, we interview a great guest who will share his or her speaking journey, identify what their keys to success have been, and highlight some critical mistakes they've made along the way that you'll want to avoid. Be sure to visit our website at spotlightonspeaking.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, sit back, tune in, and get ready to meet this week's guest. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Spotlight on Speaking show. And my guest today is Eric Vanderhoop, and I've known Eric for probably, gosh, a good, you know, 10 to 15 years or whatever. But Eric is a three-time number one international best-selling author, book publishing shepherd, book launch strategist, speaker, and host of the Publishing Success Summit, which is the largest book industry summit of its kind, with 84 book industry experts under one virtual roof. His experience in digital and print publishing began in the late 1990s, and since then he has published over 700 books directly and over 1,500 books indirectly. 700? Is that right, man? Holy yeah. cow. <laughs> Eric has personally shepherded thousands of struggling business professionals on how to navigate the often confusing publishing process and shorten the time it takes to become a published author. More specifically, Eric helps authors self-publish their books professionally. And without Further ado, welcome Eric Vanderhoek to the Spotlight on Speaking Show. Brett, thank you for having me on. It's uh, good to see you. It's been a, a little while, but uh, yeah, we used to hang out quite a lot. Yeah, it's been it's great to reconnect, and you know that's one of the funnest parts of all these interviews I'm doing is reconnecting with the folks I've known over the years. But I mean, we go back to the Author 101 University days and all that, and you were a, a valuable asset as part of that process. And brought expertise yourself to the table, certainly also. So let's let's dive right into it, Eric, and, and share a little bit more with us about how you got involved in the speaking industry in the first place. What what niche did you tackle and why? I know you've written books on a number of different topics, some totally unrelated to speaking and book publishing and all that. So so what was your impetus to get into it in the first place? Well, that's a great question. Um, and it really kind of um, goes back to a, a, a quite a long time. Um, I've always had an interest in sharing things and helping people, especially helping. Um, and um, as I later on in life, I started getting really interested in, in, in certain niches, uh, business ideas and things like that. Um, and I believe probably 1995 was when I first connected with Tony Robbins. Um, and then um, while I watched and, and read some of his books, um, I was introduced to Frank Kern um, and a couple other um, internet marketers back then. And uh, it was the wild, wild west of the internet back then. And um, so after I you know, followed a lot of these individuals, I saw how they were doing um, what they were teaching. And so um, I thought that maybe um, I could learn from them and then put into action what they were doing. And so uh, I created a book. Um, and the first book I created was called Mastering Niche Marketing. So um, how does it all deal with, or how does it all go back to, to speaking? Um, I was really never, I guess I'd be an, in, I'm in, an introvert. Um, and you wouldn't think so, but um, always shy in the big crowds. Um, and in the smaller groups, I was more open. Um, and, you know, lots of my friends would needle me and, and make fun and, and tease and stuff like that. And it was a give and take back and forth. Um, and as that went along, um, I grew in, into the entre entrepreneurship um, style of, of, of teaching. And as I did, 
I learned that, you know, you in order to, to teach, obviously you have to get out there and speak. Um, and so I was very, very, um, it took me a very, very long time to get in front of a camera and teach. Um, I was always like behind the camera, so to speak, um, or, you know, back backstage or back of the room, so to, so to speak, where I would show people and help people on, on the small level, but on the large level, I was like, there's no way I'm getting in front of a large crowd. Um, so when it really comes down to is you just got to punch through the wall um, or crawl, you know, climb over it or, or somehow find a way around it. And just um, that mindset has to come into it because if, in order for me to, to get to that position of wanting to actually speak and get in front of people, I had to actually do it. So it really comes down to just, just doing it and then doing it over and over and over and over again until you get comfortable. Now, if you're in a position where you're probably still not comfortable, that's actually a good thing, being nervous because you wanna make sure that you're giving you know, the right information and that you're teaching properly and so forth. So you you wanna have that part of the mindset part where you're, you're, you're it's not that you're worried, but you wanna get out the right information. Mm -hmm. So you're always gonna be you know, nervous, so to speak, to get out there. Um, but yeah, I would say that my, my biggest, I guess, uh, obstacle was just to get through that part of actually getting in front of people, getting in front of the video, um, and then just doing it over and over. And then after a while, actually, I break through with my um, the first summit that I hosted and put together back in um, 2016. Uh, after the first like 10 uh, video recordings I did, I was like, well, wait a second, this is actually pretty fun because then you're you know you're doing stuff that you enjoy as well. Um, and knowing that, you know, the person on the other end is listening and, and hopefully learning. So, um, and then as each interview went by, that was just more and more practice. And then you get a little bit more comfortable with, you know, just the whole situation of just, you know, you're in front of people, right? Talking to people. So, yep. but yeah, that was a big challenge for me was to, wow. to get through the video. Well, you know, without a doubt, you do get more comfortable with it over time. And I came from a, a similar background in terms of I was happy to be the back of the room guy and kind of being naturally introverted myself. But eventually I realized, you know, you need to just get the gumption up to step out from the back and get up on the stage and share what you've learned along the way. And I mean, if, if you're just sharing what you've learned and all that, then it does relieve a certain amount of pressure and you do get more and more comfortable with it over time, certainly. But as you mentioned, you did a, a virtual summit for the first time six years ago, which is, you know, almost before they were even invented. <laughs> so I, I, you know, one of the questions I normally ask folks, you know, share some of their keys to success as a speaker. So because of your extensive experience in the virtual summit world, I would kind of like to focus today, if we can, Eric, on from your experience hosting and being on virtual summits, what are some of the keys to success to make your appearance on a virtual summit as successful as possible? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, so it really, really depends on how you're, so either you're hosting it, hosting a summit, or you're on the other end of it. Maybe someone who is the, the speaker or the guest, but in, this, in the sense of you're saying for someone who's actually hosting it. So um, you wanna be prepared. So that was the, fir the first thing that you wanna be is, um, know the person that you're you're connecting with and interviewing, have questions kind of ready, um, perhaps have questions that you can either give to that person ahead of time, or you can ask them, are there questions that you would like me to ask? Um, that could be a uh, part of the preparation. Um, some some hosting uh, is more ad hoc or or more like just just kind of going with the flow, more of a conversational. Mm -hmm. So there's there's multiple, there's different, ways of, of doing uh, or hosting a summit um like could be just a qu total question and answer or like i said conversational um if, if it's not part of a summit let's say it's you're doing something in front of a, a video maybe you're answering questions frequently asked questions from people um so there's a, just a number of things that um you know a lot of it too is probably part of like the preparation so um you know Getting, um, making sure, you know, all your sound is good um, and ready to go and that your video is good to go. Um, those are obviously the little things, but those are the things that actually make a difference. So um, you want to, you know, the person who's hearing it on the other end, hopefully they need to be able to hear it properly. So you have to have obviously good um, good sound, good sound equipment. 
But as far as, you know, what should you ask or how you should ask, it's just listening as well, listening to the other person on the other end. So if I'm interviewing you or you're interviewing me, kind of picking up the conversation and just kind of listening and then kind of going and creating a conversation from whatever question is asked. Because a lot well, of times, go ahead. I'm sorry. So as a podcast guest, Eric, do you prefer the well scripted out in advance format or you prefer to go with the flow ad hoc type conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Ad hoc uh, flow, go with the flow. Um, it's more natural. Um, but again, it's really depends too on the host and how and how good, I wouldn't say how good they are, but they some might be really good at question and answers, right? Um, like a, uh, a strategic, meaning it's verbatim. They've got the questions laid out already. But even if you have the questions laid out, part of the conversation that might come out might kind of lead you down another road and so that should be kind of left open so that you can go down that road because it might enlighten um, or might bring something out that might um, broaden uh, the discussion. So, um, but yeah, I definitely go with the, the open conversation as it's just a little bit more natural than just like the, the kind of the rigid, oh, next question, next question, next question. So as a podcast, as, as a, as a podcast host, what do you tell your guests they need to have prepared in terms of equipment or light or sound or anything? What are you telling them they have to be prepared to come to the table with? Yeah, so most of the, the folks that I reach out to when I'm doing podcasts um, are people who are already experienced. So you don't really need to get into the nitty gritty of what they need because they probably should already have it. But um, it's nothing, it's, there's really no equipment that's kind of like out there that, that needs to be, it's just a plain, you know, a good camera, um, uh, a good microphone. And when I say good microphone, it's, you know, you can spend $30, $40 on a microphone or you can spend up to, you know, $130, $150, $160 on a microphone. So it, it really, as long as you can hear and it's clear, that's basically all you need. Um, so I don't, I don't really get into too much technical stuff because it really just depends on who you reach out to. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but let, let's assume that the guest hasn't been on a virtual summit before. So, yep. you know, give me give me some specifics, maybe in terms of a recommended microphone or a recommended camera or whatever, in terms of minimum requirements to look good on camera. I mean, what yep. the lighting, et cetera. I mean, I have some extra diffuse lighting here yep. above me to, you know, illuminate my face. Yeah. So, you have too little, so. Absolutely. So yeah, so just some of the, um, the minimal stuff. So I have a ring, a ring light in front of me that kind of adds a little bit more warmer light onto the face. Um, as far as the camera, I've got a Logitech. Um, and that's probably, I don't know, $100 maybe. Um, there's also microphones that are actually that are built into that Logitech. So you don't even have to get a microphone, it's built in. Um, you can have, um, I've got a Yeti. Uh, you probably can't see it. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So I got the Yeti, which is kind of a little expensive. Um, but again, it's um, the way I, I guess the way I would suggest is that if they're in this for, for business and to get better, uh, to not go over, um, over or beyond uh, for, to getting the equipment, but just getting what's necessary. So those just few things I have. Um, the Yeti, I think, is probably a little bit more than I really need. Um, but in some cases, some people may, you know, may like it. Just kind of like upgrade to something well, else. I've been, I've been using Audio Technica 2020 for about eight years, and yesterday morning the tripod leg broke off. So, oh yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll be looking for a new microphone here soon. So I have it propped up in a cup to actually use today. So yeah, so I've got a little um, uh, arm that kind of comes around, and I can put the microphone in it. And then I've got all this stuff because I just did some moving and stuff. All the pieces are <laughs> are in parts, and so I can't really assemble it yet. But um, yeah. but yeah, that's where you have the microphone, you know, like kind of up up to your up to your face. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people that have the the big like boom mics and stuff, but it you know, to me it covers up half their face, and so you, you can't see half their face when they're talking to you. It's like yeah. can't you get can't you pick, up your, pick up your voice from two feet away? So you don't have to block your face. <laughs> Anyway, that's me. So, all right. So, great tips there, Eric. 
have a couple other questions I wanted to ask you, but before we do, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world? And now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world. If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to breadridgeway.com forward slash freebie. And we are back with the Spot On and Speaking Show with my guest, Eric Vanderhoop, and we've been talking about virtual virtual events primarily today. So two, a two-pronged question for you, Eric. So whether it was a live event or a virtual summit, I'm, I'm going to ask you to bear your soul here a little bit and, and maybe share a couple mistakes you made along the way that you'd highly avoid encourage others to avoid and then also maybe just in general terms of, of virtual summits as a guest or a host what are some key mistakes you've seen people make again that you'd encourage others to avoid uh, <clears throat> yeah i see now you're putting me on the you're on the spot buddy the, hot seat maybe <laughs> put me on the hot seat so mistakes and or mistakes that i see other people too um I think uh, part of it is probably just in my, my speech. So a lot of my speech, at least I used to, maybe I still do, is the ums and ahs and the pauses that that in normal conversation, you probably don't have much of. So a lot of that can be eliminated just by being aware of it and then trying to do your best to, to eliminate that. Mm -hmm. uh, other speaking mistakes um yeah it's kind of hard to you're, so you're i'm thinking of them now and i'll probably think of a i'll, I'll think of a bunch of them right after other people let's say let's let's yeah what's the, what's the silliest thing you've seen some podcaster or virtual summit guest do that they just had your head shaking and said why would they do that yeah, so maybe uh, what's in their background, um, maybe uh, it's not set up correctly, where maybe people are running, like maybe their children or something are going into the um, into the view, which makes it distracting uh, to people who are watching. So that, that might be one situation. I don't think I've seen much of that, but I have seen one, one or two instances of that happening. Another would be a lighting. So... Um, I've, so I'm sitting near a window, um, but I, I was interviewing one person one time and they were near a window and it was early morning or, or maybe early, um, twi twilight. So it's either the sun coming up or sun going down. And as the, the interview progressed, the sun would get really, really bright <laughs> or really, really dim. Um, so having a consistent light, um, is really important because that could be something that could, uh, inter, you know, interrupt the, the thought process and the learning process of someone who's watching. As far as listening, that wouldn't even come into play, right? So if it's a right. podcast, you're listening to a podcast. So just other noises, background noises that that um, shouldn't really be in because that's distracting. Um, yeah, turn, yeah off stuff your, like that. turn off your cell phone before you start recording. <laughs> oh, yeah. From, the cell phone um, and uh, even the things on your computer that make sounds. So when you have a notification that comes in, they make sounds. So depending on how active you are on social media, you can have these pinging throughout the interview. So that could be um, uh, you know, distracting as well. So turning everything off or closing everything on, on whatever uh, computer you're using so that there's less distractions. <clears throat> so I got to ask, are you planning another summit right now? Are you working on your next one? As a matter of fact, I am working on another summit. Um, it'll be coming out probably summer of 2023 and is going to be called Book Launch Summit. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So if somebody wants to find out more about what you have going on, Eric, you know, where, where should they go to to learn about your book shepherding and this upcoming summit and all that? Just type in my name, ericvanderhope.com. That's my website. Um, or you just Google my name and you'll find hundreds of references to me. 
But basically, my official page is ericvanderhope.com. There's a contact um, page there if someone wants to get in contact with me. Um, there's information on, you know, the summits and um, the podcast that I've been on and as well as uh, events that I've attended and, and been on and also the books that I've worked on as well. So that kind of gives people an idea of, of what I do. Well, I had no idea that you had done that many books. So kudos to you. Very good. Thank you, sir. So okay, any, sure. final, any final words of wisdom before we wrap it up in this episode? Yeah, I'd say that, you know, um, whatever it is that you're trying to, to learn, I would say don't, don't, don't overlearn, don't over, overdo it, meaning just narrow in and just be really good at whatever that is. And just to focus on that one thing, because it's really easy in, in today's day and age to get um, sidetracked and, and what's the word, um, distracted because there's so much going on in the universe right in in our world and so i would say that if you're if uh, you know anyone in the audience that are trying to want to get on a podcast or learn how to do a podcast or get on a summit as a guest or be a host as a guest as a as a host um do your research there's plenty of information uh, online but you want to look to people who are doing it um, so learn from people who are, who've been doing it. So they know what, you know, what's going on. You're not learning from someone who doesn't know what's going on. So at least get educated first and then, you know, tip your toes into the water and do a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and then do it consistently, do it consistently. And, you know, down the road, you'll be, you'll, you'll be an expert. <laughs> awesome. So this has been another episode of the Spotlight on Speaking Show. My sincere thanks to this week's guest, Eric Vanderhoek. Certainly check out Eric's stuff. You know, anybody that's helped put 700 books out there knows what he's doing. So he wouldn't be doing it if he wasn't good and they wouldn't be coming back to him to do it again <laughs> and again and again if he wasn't good at what he does. So as always, I wish you the greatest of success in all that you do as you look to build your own profitable speaking career. If you haven't had a chance yet, go on to spotlightonspeaking.com and register there to be notified of upcoming episodes of this show as well as if you haven't picked up a copy of my free special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business, you can get that at brettridgeway.com. But as always, thank you so much for joining us. And until next week, take care. Bye-bye. This has been the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgeway. Be sure to join us every week as we interview speaking industry pros and have them share their best tips for building a profitable speaking business. Until next week, thank you for tuning in and remember to visit our website at spotlightonspeaking.com so you can enjoy even more great episodes like this one. While you're here, be sure to subscribe via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Spotlight on Speaking Show. Until then, our sincere best wishes to you for the greatest of success as you work to build your own profitable speaking business. Thank you.